guys, it's Matt Catling here for your mini accelerator for this week. And what we're going to be talking about is the charged life. You've probably heard me say this so many times, how you start is often how you finish. It's really, really interesting if you especially look at someone's morning ritual. Often a person's, a lot of people's morning rituals are kind of like, you know, they're lying in bed, they can't be bothered to get out, they're exhausted. Um, their mindset's really, really interesting. They kind of wake up thinking about all the things that they have to do. And then typically that transitions into all of the things that are not working, um, which is often the pattern of anxiety. And then they kind of get up, they don't move that much, and then they have their morning coffee, and then they start the day. Now, majority of the population are doing that. Now, the challenge is also the thinking that kind of generates that type of result is often before you go to bed. This has been like a big breakthrough of some of the, um, you know, the research and, and testing that I've been doing is, is that how you go to bed is a really interesting one as well. So if you're just before you're going to bed, you're thinking about all the things that you have to do or you're, you're thinking about all the things that are not working and all of those types of things, you kind of go to bed with that thinking pattern. And like, think, imagine we've got this supercomputer that all we need to do is give it the right commands and then we'll get a different outcome. And so when we go to bed, what happens is, is that our unconscious mind starts to reorganize stuff, almost like a defragging process that computers go through. And so if you're, if you're focused on things that are not you know, you know, conducive to success, or if you're focusing on things that are more impossibility instead of possibility, you're going to bed with that type of processing that starts to occur. And so when it comes to kind of living a charged life or specifically the morning charge up, some really, really powerful things that you can do, which is kind of like an add on to the stuff I want to share with you is to look at what happens just before bed as well. And so take charge, you'll see this first step, take charge of your mindset, reframe impossibility to possibility, um, stand guard when it comes to your unconscious mind. A lot of people don't realize that we're actually in charge of it. And think about those old Commodore 64s, some of you would have had those and they had like a command prompt and you used to type run and hit enter and then it would run the program. Imagine our conscious mind is like that command prompt. And so we're giving it a specific command. And then when we kind of go to bed, it's like hitting run and then the programs unconsciously start to run. If you look at dreams, even dreams are a way to restructure, reorganize information. Um, and so what I've been finding, especially with myself and clients, is, is that if you can get a lot of the stuff out before you go to bed, and also to look at, you know, your final meal before you go to bed as well. Um, you'll notice that we've been doing, running this kind of alkaline program where we've been delivering food to people. The results have been really, really incredible. But if you look at your meal before you go to bed, if you have a really, really big meal, um, if, if, if it is like an acid meal, like the food combination is incorrect, and, um, and then you eat a large amount, often that is going to affect you the next day because digestion um, is probably one of the biggest things when it comes to energy resources. And so there's a couple of things that you can do when it comes to taking charge of your mindset. Look at the meal that you have just before you go to bed. Look at the thinking. And what I like to do is I use a bit of an app. It's called Todoist. I get all of the to-do list out. So I'm not going to bed thinking of all the things that I need to do. I get all of that stuff out. And then I start to think of possibility and excitement and all of those types of things. Um, so look at the meal, reframing possibility to possibility. Also stand guard of your unconscious mind. Look at the stuff that you're putting in to your unconscious mind. Are you feeding it shit like reality TV, all of that shit? Or are you feeding it stuff that are going to really switch on new neurological connections and really kind of tap into, you know, at a higher level of performance? The next one, if we just go straight down, take charge of your mornings. And the morning is really, really important to me because how you start is how you finish. Now, you don't need to do this every morning. I don't do this every morning. But what I find is, is that when I do this, I move to such a higher level of charge and I start to get bigger and bigger results. And so one of the first things that I like to do is I want to just start moving. Now, I used to be that you know all or nothing person and I needed to bash myself at the gym and all of that type of thing. I've kind of changed that approach um, with more of a, I suppose, a charged focus. Like how do I increase life force and energy and all of those things? And this has come from, you know, those significant health challenges that I've gone through, wrong diagnoses, wrong medication, 
you know, all of these types of things. So I've worked on this, this process um, to be able to eliminate burnout, to charge you up and to be able to move to that high performance psychology. So, sorry, the first thing is you want to move. And so get up, start walking, start moving. When it comes to doing mindset work, it's so much easier to do mindset work when you're in motion in comparison to lying in the bed, exhausted, all of that type of stuff. No, 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 no. Get moving. Now, if you notice you've got patterns or avoidance patterns, you know, set the game up in a way that it's really, really easy. So wear your exercise pants to bed and socks and all of that stuff. Have your shoes ready. And so all you've got to do is just jump out, put a top on and start moving. The next thing is use gratitude as a process. Okay. What I love about gratitude is it gets you back here and now. So if you're stuck in the future, thinking of the worst case scenario, or if you're stuck in the past, reliving past events, and by the way, if you're feeling like negative emotions of anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, that's typically you're in the past. So we want to get you back to living it now, here and now. And one of the fastest ways to be able to do that is to be moving and then move into gratitude. So imagine this, we're moving, you're walking, you're in a beautiful location, what near nature, ideally, and then we move into gratitude. Now, when you're stuck in the past or stuck in the future, um, you don't feel like being grateful. So you ask yourself questions. What could I be grateful for? And you might start off micro. You might go, I'm grateful for the blade of grass that I'm walking on right now. I'm grateful for the, the place that I live in. And you just keep cycling that question until you get momentum. Now, what is this doing? It's getting you from going internal to looking external and starting to notice the environment around you and getting you into present time. The next thing that I like to do is look at mission or, you know, business owners, like your three-year strategic vision or whatever it is. And I like to look at two parts of that, which is obviously the results, the lifestyle that you have, um, but also the leader that you are becoming. And, and to really look at that, to look at the new mindset, i.e., you know, new beliefs, they use all of those things to look at the new habits and rituals and behaviors to imagine how you would deal with situations differently imagining yourself making decisions faster imagining yourself being around other leaders because leaders attract leaders so look at what we've just done we've gone movement we've gone gratitude got you back to present time then we've gone out creating your future and then what we do is we come back to now and we create your future now. Now, how I create future net, my future now is I look at that vision and I go, what's five things that I can do to that vision or that mission? What's five things I could do today? Now, the things that I want to tap off are the things that I would avoid. You know, if you look at it, the things that you avoid most hold the biggest opportunities for personal growth. And you, you probably noticed that, right? When you've done something that you've been avoiding or that's out of your comfort zone or there's fear associated to it and you hit that very, very quickly, it unlocks that repressed energy. And that creates that momentum, which will typically, ideally, last between, you know, the next, you know, morning ritual that you do or the morning charge up that you do to the next one. That's what I said, like, you know, you don't need to do it every morning. You might just do this three times a week and spread it out based on that. Um, and um, that momentum will carry through. I always say this to my clients as well when we do a coaching session. I'm like, you know, where you're going to have a little, you're going to have a different type of motivation after our session. What I really want you to do is hit the thing that you would normally avoid straight away, straight away, um, and use the momentum that we get from um, the session that we do. So this kind of how works in exactly the same way. But you want to do this process, right? So you want to be moving, you want to go into gratitude to get you back to present time. You want to connect to that bigger mission, that seven-year vision, and then you want to think, what are five things that I could do right now towards that? Ideally, the top couple of things are the ones that you're avoiding and you hit them very, very quick. Now, burnout. Burnout is a major thing, guys, and burnout is typically because there's emotional leakages um, and they haven't been dealt with. And so doing an ultimate life recharge every 90 days or six months is really, really important. Now, a lot of people say to me, oh, you know, but I'm going away, I'm doing this or whatever it is. And then they go and run amok. <laughs> I'm all good for that. I think you should be doing that kind of every eight weeks. But in terms of an ultimate life recharge, what I do is I take people away, I get them back to nature. Um, I take them to beautiful Byron Bay. We go at the top of a volcano for five days and we get rid of everything. We go into a fasting process. We get rid of devices. 
Um, we do meditation, we do Reiki, we do NLP, we do personal training, we do massages, we go on adventures, we do all of these types of things. And, um, and I would recommend that you do that, especially a fasting protocol. Um, only do like a water fast if you come to Ultimate Life Recharge. We could do a juice fast. You could do alkaline foods. The most important is to get back to nature, to get sun, increase water intake, all of those things, and be out of your environment. And that's literally, if you do the recharge process correctly, um, it's almost like having a month off. So that's why I recommend every kind of 90 days to six months doing a recharge, and that will eliminate the burnout. So think about this, right? You're taking charge of your mindset. Okay, ideally the night before, reframing impossibility of possibility. You're ensuring that you're putting really good stuff in. You're taking charge of your mornings. You're doing a recharge every six months. Amazing. Burnout is going to be a thing of the past, guys, if you do this correctly. Now, if we look at, you know, creating a structure to create incredible outcomes, um, I've shared this with you guys before. Results-based education, one-on-one -on -one mentoring to release wounds, being part of a mastermind group like our Accountability Accelerator and moving to attracting a high-performance network. Remember, leaders attract leaders. So imagine you did these four things, taking charge of your mindset, then taking charge of your morning, then booking out your recharges, like you book them up front and then really supercharge your life by getting a team a high performance team, getting someone like me or my team to be working with you and to be part of our mastermind groups, literally your life is going to be transformed very, very quickly. And so that is the education for our mini accelerator today, The Charge Life. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you need any help, please reach out. Uh, we have our uh, rapid change intensive sorry happening um every two months now we're running it in sydney we're running it in melbourne we're going to be opening up brisbane as well and we'd love to um love to have you come to that event i'd love to meet you in person and we have a whole lot of online stuff make sure you're part of our group as well our facebook group the rapid change movement there's lots and lots of education happening in that group and the tribe is awesome the key is to show up guys 90 percent of success is showing up and my biggest learning out of all of this is you don't do it solo. You can only go so far when you do it solo. The key is getting a team. That is our mini exciting for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, reach out if you need any help.